Well, some new research into sleep deprivation catching our tired eyes today. The Wall Street Journal writing about the emotional price tag for lack of sleep and a piece called The Unexpected Way Sleep Deprivation Makes Life Tougher. Here's just a part of that article. Researchers have found that people who are sleep deprived have difficulty reading the facial expressions of other people, particularly when the expressions are more subtle. They are less able to discern, for example, whether a spouse is annoyed or just serene. Does that sound familiar? Joining us now is the author of that article, Andrea Peterson, and a prominent sleep doctor and neurologist, Dr. Chris Winters, author of the upcoming book, The Sleep Solution. Great to have you both. So, Andrea, you say that you, you detailed the research in your article. Tell our viewers a little bit about what's new. What are researchers really finding out about sleep deprivation? Well, we all know that sleep deprivation can make us cranky and irritable, but what they're finding is that it actually makes us less able to discern the facial expressions of somebody else to, find, to know whether they're happy, sad, or angry. And that can have real ramifications for relationships. It certainly can. Dr. Winters, why does that happen? I mean, I think generally the brain is a sort of a, a very complex structure. Sure. Our, oh. our ability to perceive and convey incredibly tied to structures. I think Dr. Winters is glitching a little bit. He's on Skype. He was too tired to make it to a studio. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was fine. We're trying to Skype with him, and unfortunately, that connection is not coming through. Andrea, while we get that reestablished, let me just talk to you a little bit about it, sure. because you were looking at the different research as well. What was the reason of the why? So we could all kind of internalize that, sure, when we're, we're tired, we feel this way, and we're maybe not as effective, but what, why, what, is, what is missing when we're sleep deprived? Well, why is it happening? Well, actually, researchers are finding that there are certain patterns of brain activity that seem to happen when when we're sleep deprived and that seems to be that can that can um, cause some of these emotional responses there sleep deprivation actually causes the activity in the amygdala which is a part of the brain that's critical for processing emotions to um, you know it really amps up that activity and the pre, the activity in the prefrontal cortex is weakened and that seems to be sort of and, that, and the prefrontal cortex is what is critical for emotional regulation so that seems to you know be fueling some of this sort of emotional volatility that happens when you go without sleep. So how quickly can you solve it though, Andrea? Is it just getting a few extra, you know, minutes of sleep? Do you need to build up your sleep? How do you fix it? You know, the researchers at Berkeley actually who did some of this neuroimaging studies found that, you know, this hyperreactivity in the amygdala starts to happen at, you know, less than six and a half hours of sleep. Um, so it's not we're not talking about you know just getting through you know an all nighter or three or four hours. I mean this is you know pretty you know, many many people get that amount of sleep. I mean the experts say that you know seven to nine hours of sleep is what a healthy adult needs. And um, but you know the, the numbers crunched by the CDC have shown that a third of American adults get less than that, and that about 12 percent get only five hours of sleep or less. So this is something that a lot of advice that a lot of us are, are definitely ignoring. Okay, so Dr. Winters, I hope is back with us. Uh, we're, all, we're all exhausted by uh, <laughs> trying to try to keep this all together. But Dr. Winters, if you could, you're so good at this, giving us just a tip that could help us improve our sleep just a little bit so we're not so emotional and able to handle our stress better. I'm sorry, I got up early to exercise today. I didn't get enough sleep. I thought you were mad at me. Right I wasn't really now. reading your emotions right, and I hung up. So I'm sorry, I'm back now. I was told that you weren't upset with me. You know, I think the most important thing we can do is just to be aware of our sleep. It's amazing how many people think they're getting six or seven hours of sleep at night, but they're falling under that six hour window. So anything you can use to track your sleep in, in, in sort of in a realistic way can be very helpful to have a very clear perception of your sleep and not make the mistake when your wife says, sure, go out with all of your friends from, uh, from medical school and stay out all night and leave me with the children all weekend. You don't perceive that as actually her wanting you to do that. You understand very <laughs> clearly that this is not a good idea. Don't, you do not want to do that. So don't make the mistake. <laughs> That's right. Save yourself the trouble. Get a right. little extra sleep. This sounds exactly. all far too familiar, I have to tell you, especially with two kids, uh, two and just a, just a little bit less than that. <laughs> Dr. Winters, Andrew, great to have you both. We look forward to having you both back. Thank you. Thank you.